Recently, I've been having a lot of fun playing with interior photo scans from Sketchfab. Now there's a huge variety of these and a lot of them, most of them I would say, are available to download and use for free if you attribute the author. If you look at these in material preview, they look okay and you can even add some of your own objects and they look all right. So here I've added this skull, globe and this knight. But the problem appears when you try to use these in cycles to get much better, much more realistic ray tracing. If we switch this over to rendered view, you'll see that's completely black. And that's because this mesh is watertight or it's almost watertight. So no light is able to seep in from the outside. That's even if you crank up the world brightness a lot, sometimes a tiny bit of light seeps through, but it looks rubbish. You might think it's easier to work around this. You add a light in the middle and okay, that's adds something, but it still looks kind of rubbish. It doesn't really match what the scene looks like. You can try and play with this to make it like bigger or smaller and that might help a little bit, but really this isn't the way to do it. I'm going to show you the way to do it. The way to do it is to reproduce the lighting that's in the scene from scratch. So you're going to look for candles and replace them with something like a candle. Look for windows and replace them with light sources that look like windows. And the end result is you should end up with something like this after you add the candles, like this after you add little accent lights that are in the scene, and like this after you also add in the windows. And this looks great now. You can add objects, you can move objects around and they blend into the scene really nicely because they're lit like the scene was lit originally. So for example, we can take this knight, we can move him around and you can see that his lighting matches the scene really nicely. And that's the same for all of these other objects. So the first thing we're going to do is get the Sketchfab plugin. This makes it a lot easier to import Sketchfab models. Sometimes if they're weird formats and you import them into Blender, the textures might not be there natively, but the Sketchfab plugin makes that really easy. You just copy and paste the URL and you can import a scene and all the textures are there and ready to go. Once you have it, you're going to go into material preview because we want the materials to be there. We want to see what it looks like. We don't want it to be dark. And we're going to look around to look at the main light sources in the scene. So in this upper vestibule, we can see that on the top floor, there's this nice big window that lets in a lot of light. And at the bottom, we can see two kind of doorways, which are also letting light into the scene. And we see candles. And you can see that if you add a point light and just think you can light up the whole scene, it looks rubbish. Just like that same idea looked rubbish in the first scene I showed you. So, the first thing we did was to place an area light in this big window that's at the center of the camera. And then we place it in the center of the window. And then we change the shape from square to rectangle. And that allows the size to match the window really nicely. And then we're going to copy this light to any other window or any other light source that's going to look similar to this. So when I was making this, I thought that the two doorways that allow light to come in from the bottom, I thought those looked similar to this. And so instead of duplicating with shift D, and then you have to change the settings every time, I duplicated using alt D, which makes an instanced duplicate. And that means that later, if I want all the windows to be brighter, I just change the power once and then all the windows become brighter or I turn it down and they all become less bright. So here I'm just moving these area lights so that they match the location of the real light sources as closely as possible. And then as I'm adding these lights, I'm positioning them and I'm comparing the shadow that my fake light adds and I'm comparing that with the real shadow that's baked into the photo scan. And I'm trying to get them to match up really closely because if my shadows look like the photo scan shadows, then A, that's an indicator that the lighting matches really closely and B, it's going to look better. It's going to look more realistic. So here I'm trying to match the position of the light on the right doorway. And I know that's matching the source lighting 
when even the shadows look similar. So you can see that I'm going to play around with the location until the shadow looks just like the shadow that's baked into the texture. And then I play around with the other light. Again, I'm trying to match this other shadow. And there are lots of different things that you can play around with to get the lighting to match. Here, I thought that I wanted a narrower spread because the lighting actually was coming through the room. And so it was already quite directional. It had to go through first a window and then this door frame. And so that's why I reduced the spread of that beam. But I found out later actually that I only wanted this spread to be different for some of the lights, but it actually changed them for all of the lights because of the instanced duplicates. And so I had to actually go back and the light that was upstairs, I had to make it its own light so that it can have its own wider spread. Now, all of the main natural light sources are in place. I want the color temperature to match and to be realistic. So instead of picking a color and picking an RGB value that roughly matches the scene, we are going to match this exactly using a black body node. So in the light, we're going to tick use nodes. We're going to press shift A to add and search for black body. We're going to plug in the color of the black body to the color of the emission. And you can see that whatever color you pick for the black body is then used for the lights. And this took me a bit of playing around with because I hadn't figured out that um, I had messed up the spread. But eventually I figure out that the top light should have a wider spread. And as soon as I fix that, the color temperature looks much better. And now I wasn't sure how important these candles were going to be, but I added them. And again, I used my Alt D duplicate trick so that later I can change the temperature and the brightness of one candle and it affects all of them. And so I made all of the candles on the stairwell, top, middle, bottom, and then also in the chandelier hanging down from the top. And once that was all in place, I played around with some of the strengths of the candles until it matched the source as closely as I could. So yeah, I was happy with it here. And then now that you have this lighting matched, you might think, what's the point? Because all we've done is we've ended up at something that looks like the material preview. Well, no, you've ended up with something much better because now you can add other models to the scene. I'm going to add a sculpture. And because the lighting matches, the object that you add is going to feel like it fits into the scene really nicely. So because we've done all this work, we can just import this model again using the Sketchfab plugin. We're going to move it and scale it and rotate it. I'm going to place it at the top of the stairwell. I'm going to have to increase the size. And then you can see you end up with this scene that looks really natural. So you can almost feel this light coming in through that window. It looks appropriate to the scene because that's how it was lit in real life. And it casts light on this model that we've imported. So this bronze object at the top of the stairwell that's selected now is an entirely different model, but it looks like it was part of this scene because we've matched the lighting as best as we can. And then once I had it, I used this as an excuse to make a little demo for uh, Autofocus Pro. I've just added a feature which looks really nice, which is real-time focus. So if you click that real-time focus button, you can move the camera in the viewport and it'll focus the camera in real time. And the nice thing is that this integrates with all of the other features of Autofocus Pro. So if you're using a lens sim camera, it will focus your lens sim camera. It'll focus on whatever region you pick. It'll use the targeting strategy and all that good stuff. So yeah, a different kind of video today, but I hope that you found it helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you have any questions or if you've done this yourself, feel free to share your results down in the comments.